It's an honor to get to present for the Young Persons nomination. Uh, and my name is Niklas Dahlström. I'm Human Factors Manager at Emirates. And I will be presenting under the title, It's Getting Better All the Time, Innovations to Enhance Pilot Performance. So what I'm going to talk about is human factors, because that is what I work with. And on this slide, you see a very early version of human factors. That is an oxygen mask being tested. And before that oxygen mask, they had troubles. So the earliest human factors were very basic. We all need to breathe. But things have changed since then, and they changed a lot. The changing situation for pilots today and for many professional groups in the industry is that experience used to be really important. It still is, but it has changed. And this is because we used to assume that experience leads to expertise. If you do something enough, you become an expert. But you all met the person who had 20 years in the career and maybe wasn't really good. And the one who had two years and was really good because it matters that you reflect on what you do and you try to get better through practice. But where things really have changed for pilots, controllers, cabin crew engineers is on the other side. It is about exposure. Since we're so much safer, things don't go wrong anymore, or very rarely. And then there's not an opportunity to learn how to handle when things go wrong. So there's less variation in the exposure, which leads to the experience being less worth than it used to be, and expertise not coming along as easily. So limited exposure leads to degraded experience and we need more effective training to achieve expertise. Now that's the context for the things I'm gonna talk about. And we really need to make a decision in industry. Do we want our professionals to be like artists, top of their field, as we compare to fields like medicine, music, and sport, or do we just want them to be machine operators? If we want the left-hand side on this slide, I can summarize a whole pilot's training in one slide. Here we go. Now, someone pointed out it should say magician at the front of the aircraft, which would be an interesting way to name the pilot. So it is about supporting pilot thinking or the thinking of any professional in the industry, not just ticking boxes, but, and not just following checklists, but involve and engage people make sure that they have mental models that can be triggered in difficult situations so they can resolve these situations. So the first initiative that I want to talk about is mid-fidelity simulation. Now fidelity is how close you are to reality and of course the assumption is that the closer to reality you are the better training. That is however not true. Um, and it has to do with stories. Stories are incredibly powerful for learning. And you see here an example uh, of an Airbus 300 that got a missile in its wing over Baghdad many years ago. And in the interviews with the captain, he said this. He recalled the DC-10 crash at Sioux City, a crash where many people survived due to the um, crew's management of the situation. He remembered that story and found the strength and initiative to handle his situation and land his aircraft successfully in spite of having had a missile through the wing. So stories are incredibly powerful and stories are the base of simulation. One thing that we have worked with is the MS Antwerpen a German ship simulation, which is played simply with a printer and a group of people in a room and some blueprints. You have pictures here of how it may look. It's a very simple simulation, but very powerful in its training effects. And uh, we have written a couple of research articles about this. This is what showed our team first, the power of this simple simulation, how much learning you can get out of it. So we went on from that and created our own simple simulation. The first one we did had the framework of this story. So we have someone who's the manager of a supermarket getting a call in the middle of the night that says, the temperature control has failed. You must come and set the temperature manually, 
since you're the manager. And the next step is you simply have these controls. Your target value is four degrees Celsius. The current value is 14.1. Just adjust up and down. A very simple task, but of course, when you have a big room like this, you won't see the effects immediately. So it's a little bit more complex than it looks first. We had uh, a number of thousand pilots play this with these controls. And we saw that some were reactive, fortunately very few. They didn't sort of get it. They were dialing up and down and didn't really get to a stable and um, appropriate temperature. Some people made incremental changes and essentially got there. And some, we could demonstrate these phases of learning in this. For first, it's chaos. We don't understand what's going on. You're dialing up and down to see what's happening. Then there is exploring the situation. And after that, there is expertise. A very simple simulation, but we've written a research article also on this one, identifying the different patterns that we found in the pilots when they did this. And you're learning to handle a situation which you're not equipped for, which is the basis of resilience. Taking a blow, handling a new situation, and getting up there and sorting it out. The next simulation we went through was about an emergency descent. Uh, we had the flight plan for this, but the simulation itself was very simple. Just a plane symbol flying over Turkey. And what then happens is that there is a loss of cabin pressure. Um, and you can direct the plane across geographically. You can change its altitude and you can communicate. So you need to avoid other aircraft. Then you need to check the weather for different airports and make your choice and go there. Again, an extremely simple simulation played on a tablet, but it has most of the important aspects of handling a situation like this and choosing your diversion airport. The latest project, which I would like to talk more about, but I'll just show you, is a cooperation between Emirates and Boeing, where we created a simple simulation, again, played on a tablet, but simulates a lot of the important aspects of an aircraft and difficult decision that has to be made. We played it to 4,000 pilots, we made a report on it, and we currently develop a second scenario with Boeing. And we hope that this will scale to a library of scenarios which can be played for learning. Uh, the reaction from our pilots has been very positive, and we have full support in going forward and developing more scenarios. So that is how simple simulation can provide a lot of training value and development for pilots. That is one of the innovations I want to talk about. The second one is eye tracking. Eye tracking has been used in aviation for decades, but mostly for research and rarely for any operational or training applications. What we want to do is bring it into training. And our plans for this is with an Australian company named Seeing Machines who develop eye tracking. We have already made two data collections at Emirates and we're now developing an instructor interface with the hope that we're gonna have eye tracking in at least one of our simulators in not too long. So, of course, you, under, you might ask, how do you track this then? How do you track the gaze of a pilot? Well, fortunately, you don't have to wear any equipment anymore. It's just cameras and they're very small. Here they are, a camera and an infrared light and the reflection of the infrared light of the I then tells you where you're looking. It also has some advanced software to detect exactly where you're looking as well as detect head movements. So it's completely non-intrusive. Pilots forget it within minutes and just act naturally. I would like to show an example of how this can look. Um, and here we have one of those. So I'll play that for you.
So as you can see in this video, there was just a very detailed view where this little tracker moves across the screen with a tail and you can't really see where it's going unless you look all the time moment to moment. That is not possible for a trainer. So we came up with an innovation here where we simply coded uh, the screen in different, well, the screen and the interior of the aircraft with different colors. This is what we call the candy bar. So you can have the representation of where a pilot's looking uh, simply by having colors go across the screen. That means you can look very shortly and still have some idea what's going on. We have an example from a video here, a very simple one, where we can show that we can detect when the pilot is looking down, although he should be looking out through a head-up display. So that was a simple example. Let's go to a more complex one. This is in a free 80 full flight simulator where we had the cameras and did a full data collection with a number of crews. Here is one example where you can see both pilots and where they're looking. They're on a low visibility approach, so they should mostly be looking on the PFD, the primary flight display. But when they call out the last altitude before deciding to land, after that one of the pilots should look out. Uh, and you will see this represented by the colors clearly and simply as you look at this video. So, in summary, we talked about human factors in action. We talked about pilots and expertise, mid fidelity simulation as a training tool, and eye tracking to improve pilot training, to know where they are looking and to be able to help them to get better. That was my presentation. Thank you very much and good luck with this event.